we're gonna go ahead and uh, strap her down and then uh, get you guys a solid baseline. It's not available right now. The car is not happy and it's locking out the, the mode selector, which is kind of normal. All right, guys, so we baselined roughly like a 400 on this dyno. So let me get that out of the way here. On our dyno, which is Dynacom 15,000 series, um, no interpolated load, no nothing, just a gear roll on test. Uh, we have it, we have it out around 415, let's call it. So about 415 horse, about 380 foot pounds in that range. So. We'll call that the average. We'll call that our baseline on this particular dyno. I feel it's a little short. Um, you know, looking at looking at kind of what everything you know, looking at what everybody else has done and what's out there, I I feel like the dyno's more held back. So um, it's more of like a Mustang dyno number, so to call it, or so to speak, than it is like a Dynajet number. It's a little withheld. So anyway. We'll call it 415, 380. Um, now, we're gonna let the car cool down a little bit so that obviously the tests are the same. We're logging with HP, we're checking stuff. We're gonna move into doing our first prototypes on the intake air system for these. So, we already have our drop-in air filters. So, these, um, we haven't actually ran gains on these ourselves. Uh, we've got feedback from customers and we, we, post that, that we posted that feedback. So this is already a product that we make and we're gonna integrate that into our air intake system. So the boxes on these cars, actually, you know what? Do you want me to grab a box that's not on the car? Yeah, if you got one. Yeah, I, got, I, I mean, I have them in there. I should just probably go yeah, grab one, huh? Okay. back of the box on these cars. So unlike a lot of the earlier Mustangs, uh, during the engineering process, you know, we looked at the boxes and looked at the construction and kind of the fitment in the engine bay, and they have a decent amount of airflow to the box. So to keep the cost down for the customer, you know, one of the things that we looked at was instead of making the whole entire box and not gaining that much from it, um, what we wanted to do is keep the cost down. So by utilizing the factory box, which is a good construction, it's got decent airflow from the grill. Um, you know, Ford optimized it pretty well. It's gonna save us on development and it's also gonna save you guys whenever we come out with the full system to purchase for the car, it's gonna you know, save on the pricing. So uh, obviously less components makes it a cheaper part. And we're already you know, doing two intakes on this Mustang versus one. So already out of the gate, you know, the, the cost is elevated. So this is our first attempt here. So this is the very first uh, pre-production prototype stuff. Um, it's all 3D printed, we can run it. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the car. You guys are gonna get to ride along on this little adventure and we'll, uh, we'll see what we think about it. We'll discuss it. Uh, the other cool thing is too, is we'll probably have this video out before this has even gone into full production. So comment, let us know what you guys think. If you think there's something different you wanna see on the product, let us know because we're trying to, you know, take some different angles on, on the way we're doing things as a business. And we wanna involve you guys as the customers. Uh, you know, obviously, the engineering aspect of it, you know, we like to dive into and we always handle that. But if you guys think, you know, hey, the, the, I don't like the way the lid looks or I want different colors or whatever it may be, let us know because we're making a product to sell to you guys. So I feel like this is a good angle to, you know, to go at and, uh, you know, get everybody involved on and kind of show you what we're doing. So 
we're going to go ahead and get this on the car and then we'll get it back on the dyno well back into dyno in it and uh see what we see what we got so go ahead and pop all our quick connects off here oh, i'm gonna need a 10 for that this one bolted Probably one of the easier intake systems to take apart. At least that's a solid, right? We got one 10 mil. All right, so knock these out. But yeah, I mean the the area that the the box fits in. It's going to be hard to make it a lot more efficient than that, you know without getting into really cutting stuff up and moving a lot around. So these have carbon traps in them. So down inside there you have, it's basically like a, almost the same style as a, I don't I guess you could call it like a cat almost, you know, it's like a pre filter prior to the, the engine on the intake side. So, those are also restrictive. Obviously, our intake system's not gonna have that. Already got that one. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll be honest, it was one of those things that everybody was really hard on in the beginning. It's like, everybody's like, why do we need two throttle bodies? Well. I think it had to do with the fact that obviously they wanted to increase horsepower. They were adding the carbon traps to clearly hit some kind of an emissions threshold, I'm assuming. Um, but being that they had to add those restrictions and they still wanted to up horsepower, I think this is probably the easiest way. The cool thing is, and this is a car we haven't touched on yet or anything that we've really let, let out yet on, is on the twin turbo 24 mustang that we have when we were doing a lot of testing with that i can tell you right now that the twin throttle bodies help because we know we know what the older cars did on a single one of these throttle bodies two of them definitely didn't hurt it so we have good data on that car too so we'll have to do more more information on that once once we're getting ready to release it so but yeah so let's uh let's start putting this on Not bad. You guys are seeing the first fit of this, so it's not even like, <laughs> this is literally the first time this has been on this car. So, yeah, not, not too shabby. Everything's fitting pretty nice. The way we're looking right now, we're gonna try to do these in carbon, similar to our other intakes like we do for the GT500 and Raptor R. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to do these out of carbon, and 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 I think it'll look pretty damn killer. So, all right, let's grab the other side. Clearly, we don't want to put these back on there. That wouldn't look as good. So, the the other cool thing about these cars that we were noticing doing some of our basic testing is obviously you get you know air from the grill into each box from the grill. So that's helpful um what we did with the lid is we opened this corner up and i'll show you when we put this on here we open the edge of the filter up with this window because what it's doing is it's actually going to allow us to gain a little bit of flow from the fender well area so See, there you go. Uh, got a slight little clearance issue there with this harness. Which it may just be the routing. Let's see. There we go. So, what we're actually getting though, which is kind of neat, is we're getting flow 
from the fender slash headlight area here. So there's actually a little duckbill here above the headlight. So what we're thinking is we can remove this because there's actually an air gap right here. So that actually give us a little bit more cool airflow to the lid of the box. So is it gonna be a lot? No, but it's still something. So if at some point this becomes inefficient and you're not able to pull the air, say, um, not to get into too much, but one of the things that we ran into with the GT500 in testing with an anemometer is the opening in the grill was too small to actually feed the engine when there was no vehicle speed. So in other words, if you had an enclosed box on the GT500 and you got on it, say leaving, like say you're at the drag strip and you're leaving, you're leaving the line, that initial hit that the supercharger is pulling in, it didn't physically have enough air volume. It couldn't move it through that port and the grill quick enough. So basically you get, the box would become static for a second until you had some vehicle speed. So these boxes aren't gonna be plagued like the 500 was, um, but just, just some food for thought. So we got one lid on here. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab the other side. Okay, nice. All right, so we'll fire this thing back up. See what we got, make some more pulls. Good initial hit. Yeah. All right. Sounds a lot cooler. It does sound better. Yeah. For sure. It sounds real good from up front. All right. So we'll do. What was that for? What twenty? Four twenty-one. All right. So I'll put that in. We'll see if that changes. We'll go right into another pool. Now let's pull three on the log. All right, save that. I'll run again. Pretty consistent, huh? Yeah, 421 again. Yeah. Let's see what we were at on timing and stuff. About the same, honestly. It was like 30, 33. So they're within one degree. So 
and it doesn't look like it's pulling real hard up top. It seemed to stick with about 33 to 30 degrees. So it's pulling less timing, um, which is a good sign. That, that shows efficiency. So yeah. So all in all, intake air temp was 70 degrees. Um, let's look back at the 414 log that we did earlier. Air temp was 79 degrees. So once again, yeah, we're sitting static on a dyno and we have a fan blowing. Um, but in fairness, you know, the car is sitting still. So clearly if you're driving down the road, you're gonna have more airflow, you're, you're, the hood's down, there's more stuff going on, but a change is a change. So with the factory lid and the factory intake on it, we we're almost 80 degrees. And then changing over to the SP Motorsport air intake, we are at, let's see here, open that back up again. We're at 72. So call it eight degrees or maybe almost 10. Um, yeah, so it's all, all good things. But it's a very good base. You know, we're gaining just under 10 horsepower. Um, the other thing is too, is as I kind of stated earlier, um, the whole like sitting still to driving down the highway. There's a lot of different airflow dynamics going on. So when you're sitting on the line at zero mile an hour and you crack the throttle wide open, you don't have any airspeed of the car moving, helping push air and funnel it into the front of the car. So having a more open box design, as long as it's getting cool air from under the hood, um, having a more open design is obviously gonna help with that. You get quicker volume, faster in the box, into the engine. So I think on a track time basis, it's gonna look like more than 10 horsepower. But for a starting point, you know, here on the dyno, pretty happy with that. I mean, we changed nothing but the filters and intake tubes basically and the box lid. So we're still pulling through the factory lower box. I think, I think it's a pretty good baseline. So we're going to go back to the drawing board a little bit, get a little more data here and uh, see if we want to make any changes. But so far, we're pretty happy with that. So as I said, you know, comment, subscribe, like, like the channel, um, comment though, let us know what you think, you know, let us know, uh, obviously we're going to do other colors than red. It's going to be carbon. So probably not even going to be in colors, but let us know what you think about it. You know, we're, we're open. Um, obviously if you guys are buying the product, um, there's probably not going to be a lot of changes that we're going to take in from an engineering aspect, but from a looks aspect, from what you guys want to see here, etc., let us know. Comment, talk to us. And let us know what you think. So, um, yeah, like, subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. You know, we, we mentioned in the past about the suspension stuff on the Dark Horse being a little bit different than the Mustang GT. Everything moves. I mean, we got the diff moving. Nothing's moving now. There's zero flex. And this is shit that I really haven't seen anybody do, you know? 